Welcome everyone to today's video. Continuing on our bare metal 3D low level programming series, today we want to finish texturing as well as finding our last graphic bugs there or graphic corruption. So far we used color gradients for the graphics and for texturing we need to fill a couple of more registers in the hardware. This texture, U start, V start. And what this means is in this 3D world we have X, Y and Z coordinates and for texturing Usually hardware adds some more dimensions, specifically U and V. And U and V, although this might sound strange, is simply X and Y in the texture. So imagine this is our texture here. You can ignore this mid-map stuff for now. Just think this is one texture. And this is just like a bitmap in your video memory. And the reason they do not call this X and Y is that X and Y already used for our coordinates here, for our vertexes in the 3D world. So you can see here X and Y. This is why X and Y are commonly not used again in the texture domain, but instead U and V, which is just the X and Y in the texture we are using. So for texturing, we just need some location in our video memory and put there some data, some texture. The way we do this here, so we have here some frame buffer address because we need ourselves in our small example reserve some memory and we need to know where we place things. So we start with a frame buffer and at the frame buffer size and then we need the set buffer where the hardware is storing the set coordinate of the last drawn graphic elements on the screen not to redraw and overdraw stuff that is not visible. And last we allocate here some space for the texture, just some very small one here, just some two by two pixels or so. So some 16-bit texture with one bit alpha and five bits blue, green and red. And we just fill here test values. So the first pixel we fill here red synthetically here just with one, 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 red, green, blue and white, just for a quick test. We also have our S3 verge triangle with a texture address, texture level and texture format. And if this function is called with a texture address, we fill all those additional registers, triangle base, UB and start values, so these are base values, start values, and then the delta values, just like for the colors that the hardware is adding for each scan line, because this is of course not simply one. If it's further away, for example, then it would be two, or if it's closer, then it is half pixel for each pixel on the screen. And later we also could add perspective correction, not yet done this. And if we have this texture address, we also need to fill here this texture format here, texture filter. This is just nearest neighbor, can also change this later. And this is of course all the stuff. So for this kind of things, we would later want an API to set all this, not to hard code this, but to have an API to change whether to use nearest neighbor or linear interpolation and such. And then last but not least, we need to invoke this here. And the texture test here is simply a triangle on the screen with fixed coordinates and then we draw this here, 3D triangle, texture, texture size, one is two to the power of one, two by two pixels, super small texture just for testing. Currently these values are ignored, but later this could be used for fogging, I think, this color. After all the basic introduction, let's show you the result. And I show you this also that you can follow along with the PS3 to really learn stuff, especially when things get more complicated with the PS3. You need to have some basic understanding and as you can see our example and here's our texture triangle as you can see this is not just some simple color but let's magnify this and as you can see this are really i just need to stop this to avoid all the audio dropouts on this low power hardware you can see this is really our synthetic texture there in memory blue red green and white just as we specified it and this filled here for all the pixels without any scaling this delta values over one and let's also use a more fancy texture. For this, I converted a picture test here around with the delta values. Texture filtering made here some symbolic here for this texture filtering nearest and linear. And also fill two textures so that we have a full filled rectangle of this. And also reintroduced double buffering. So as I said earlier, I already had here a flip frame function, but this, as you can see, there was a return. And in this example, I finally re-enable double buffering because this flickering got on my nerves. At the end of frame buffer and stream processor programming, I double here the frame buffer address so that we have two buffers for double buffering. 
Also, I implemented loading a fancy texture from a file. I have here some Lena texture. This is some raw file. So we load this here in a loop with our read function that we map here to DOS. And also to make things more fancy, wait here after drawing the world. I wait here that the S3 engine is idle with a subsystem status register here for the amount of free FIFOs and idle so that things flicker less and look more nice. So let's compile this. And here you see that we now have a really pretty texture, this standard Lena image. This kind of scaling you see, this delta values for U and V, the texture X and Y, are now scaled to the full size of the triangle. I just need to stop it to avoid other audio dropouts. Yeah. Lena just had to check not that I say something that is inaccurate. That is of course in the meantime a really pretty example. We now probably also see how smooth this is now without any flickering using double buffering. So double buffering means we flip the final image only when it is fully drawn. If we only have one frame then we draw in this flame and then if we clear it it will be black and then we gradually paint here all the objects and this will be seen as huge flickering and yeah this already looks way better. And last but not least, take a look at the final example. Because I finally figured out some more details, I think in the first example even my double buffering was not 100% correct or so, but let's see. And also, not only did I create a much more fancy 3D world, So now we have some really fancy 3D world going on. So we have now four cubes here that are rotated, that are no longer having invisible sides. We have here our texture. So this is of course a rather fancy 3D example for our 3D accelerated stuff. And by the way, as you can see, here is no more flickering of everything. I think in the last example you have still seen flickering because I think my double buffering was not correctly waiting for engine idle or something or always flipping to the drawing frame or something stupid like this. There is only one bug left. Maybe I leave it for you in the comments to point out what it is. And triangle wise, so this are four cubes, six sides is 12 triangles. Just got other audio dropouts again for this overheating surface. 12 triangles is 24 is 48 so this is a 48 triangles just for the cubes plus the two test triangles the rotating triangle so this are 50 51 plus a texture so this are 53 triangles that we are drawing of course this is not that much for really fancy demo we could draw even more just started once more now that the fans are on full speed so quite some triangles and all the set buffer stuff is working and double buffing and often the only thing is some quick corruption of an overwriting the mouse cursor you can look in the CR. As I said there is one a little bit bug in this demo. Maybe leave in the comments below if you see what I mean. What could it be? Size wise these are only some 23k plus a texture. Of course super tiny and I could make this even more tiny if I wanted to. And the bug that the triangle wasn't drawn was very simple. The bug that I thought was set buffer fighting or something was a very simple and stupid bug. I had here from very early code drafting, I had here a check in the triangle drawing whether to draw the triangle because very early I had a division by zero and my program would be stuck in an infinite interrupt exception handling loop for a division by zero, which I didn't handle or still don't handle. So I returned here simple, if the delta x and delta y are zero, we return and not draw everything. And this was wrong. This is why this side triangles were sometimes not drawn and, and it looked like looking into a open cube. And the reason why this was wrong, this was simply if this side of the triangle, imagine such a triangle from here to there and the delta x would be zero. My code would not have drawn such a triangle. 
So you can see here if delta x zero, so this delta x would be zero, we would not have drawn this. So all triangles that had the long side here a delta zero, or alternatively the y side. So either of this, this would be for example like such a triangle, delta y here from, from here to there, this triangle would be delta y zero, such kind of special in quotes triangles we would not have drawn and this is why we had this graphic corruption what looked like an open cube and this is also if you see graphic corruptions in games this can be very well such kind of programming errors where some programmer was not thinking some conditionals completely through and it is simply skipping drawing something that should be drawn and things like this or filling it incorrectly in this registers so that's it for today this graphic demonstration is rather complete I may continue with this another snowy day in the winter or so. I have quite some ideas what I could do with this. But that's it for today. I hope you learned something. And also we will continue with the PlayStation 3 sometime soon. And in the meantime, I'm pretty proud of my own low level written from scratch bare metal 3D graphic code here. And I will for sure build more of this. Also for other cards and the P3. But Maybe I even write more complete libraries, like maybe I can write complete libraries. And we got audio dropouts. Thank you very much, Microsoft, for this awesome hardware quality and Intel for this top of the line outstanding low voltage CPUs. Yeah, in my opinion, this is pretty cool, and I will for sure build more of this. Also for other hardware, maybe even a small GL for bare metal, low level graphic stuff. And it is also, in my opinion, pretty impressive how small that is. 23K and this is not even optimized. I'm pretty sure if I optimize the heck out of this, especially as we use a accessor function here for this far pointer abstraction or this unary pointer abstraction, if I would use bare metal pointer, this all this excess here alone would probably already decrease the size by some good 20, if not 30% and things like this. And yeah, so for sure you can pack this in 10K if you want to, or if you totally obfuscate this. Oh, and by the way, one cool thing, um, I did not find anything in there to clear the set buffer. And initially I have done this set buffer clear because for each frame we need to reset it to zero. And initially I have done this simply with, a, with two triangles. And for this, I have the set buffer mode. So we still use this set buffer mode here. So we clear this with Ah, with normal and this clear bit set, compare, this is compare always. So initially I used two triangles. I couldn't find anything else and I'm, I'm pretty sure probably that is how the Windows driver is also doing this, at least I guess. And unless they are doing it stupidly and use the CPU, I'm pretty sure using the CPU to write into the video memory is probably slower. So in my opinion, this is probably the fastest here on this S3 Verge. And then I thought, wait a second, we have here these triangles and these triangles have this delta values for the sides. Delta for this side and delta for that side. What if we simply draw a degenerated triangle with this delta values zero so that these lines are orthogonal, are just straight up. I thought there should not be really anything in the hardware preventing this. And I tried this out, so I implemented here a 3D rectangle. And this 3D rectangle is a straight filled rectangle with this triangle base here and this sides, this delta sides zero. And at least in the emulator it works. I've not yet tested this on real hardware, but I don't see why it should not work. So now we have a 3D rectangle function here that is just the same as a triangle, just a little bit simpler. And this avoids us one extra command, so we can fill the whole set buffer and screen. Actually, we also fill the screen with this. Not only clearing the set buffer, this is also clearing the screen with black. Actually, in a game, you could probably do this even more clever. So, for example, if you have a jump and run, you could actually save one complete fill and with this quite some memory bandwidth. If you do not clear and fill the last backplane with black or so, but you already fill it with a horizon or so, or in a space shooter with a galaxy, with the first set buffer clear. And with this, you save quite some memory bandwidth not filling the 
frame buffer for nothing. So actually very fast set buffer clearers, filling the frame buffer with something useful. So I hope you found this interesting and learned something. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe. And I hope to see you soon for the next videos to come.